Hi, I'm Tana Greeknose and welcome back to my channel. If you've been on my channel at all for the past week at least, you've seen that I've been streaming my playthrough of Rebirth so far. So these are my current impressions right out the gate after the Corel Prison segment uh, leading up to Gongaga. Let me just get this right out of the way real quick because I don't know if anyone else is feeling like this, but can we talk about constantly showing Tifa and Aerith's feet like the first time I saw in the calm in it was a shock to me because they looked so realistic and I didn't know that like I needed to see Tifa and Aerith's feet but I guess I did and then we see them again in, when they're in the changing room lockers in uh, Junon putting on their little Shinra Trooper uniforms so I thought that was like interesting and I was tickled there and then again we're seeing more skin shown in the Costa del Sol segment which they did really well by the way like it was the ultimate fan service moment without making you know Tifa look Look overtly sexualized or anything of that manner you know if, if like I, like I said again this was the place to show the skin so you wanted to see Cloud's nipples and his um chicken legs <laughs> you did you got what you wanted and then again Tifa and Aeris bathing suits look really cute but man that that whole waddle model walk portion and the music was just perfect a uh, red 13 acting bashful and then cloud saying that they needed sunscreen it was great it really was and uh yeah i guess i'm not used to seeing all the pixelated skin and the heroic poses from dio the peck jiggling theatrics at the gold saucer this is the real reason that square enix re made rebirth of course so I guess that's one of the things I'm still processing, but can I just say I love all the character moments. Um, a lot of the goofy moments such as, you know, Tifa and Aerith teasing Cloud or, you know, Cloud Jr. showing up and Cloud saying he wanted to, you know, off himself, uh, being compared with a little chocobo chick that was great and I feel like because I'm not currently playing it in Japanese obviously they're taking a lot of liberties with the English script um one of my <laughs> favorite moments that I'm not sure was in the Japanese the way it was translated but certainly took me and stream by surprise was when Aerith said question does that make me a dumbass uh, I didn't say that what I meant was <laughs> That was great. I really enjoyed that moment with Aerith. I do have my qualms about her character in general. That has never changed since I first played Final Fantasy VII, but I think that was my favorite moment so far, humor-wise, just because it was actually so unexpected. When we're talking about the affection mechanics so far, obviously I had to have Tifa ahead. So some part of me, though, didn't want to be too mean to Aerith, but I kind of have to keep the distance because I want to get Tifa. There was a dialogue option that I wish I didn't choose in Costa del Sol because I could have been meaner to her, but I wasn't. And so now she's basically equal with Barrett and, and Red 13 on the affection scale. Now it's interesting because I haven't heard or read anything about a Red 13 date. Maybe it's because I've managed to avoid some spoilers here and there, but I like that Red 13 is included as an option for affection. I love that. And can I just say, They've done such a good job with Red 13 in this game, like from his moonwalk portion to him complaining about wanting to see the manager. Such a strong moment for him. And that's the thing, you know, all the characters are done really well, of course. Nojima the writer has taken his time with really embellishing the relationships between them, the interaction between them and Cloud, uh, Red 13 and Barrett, uh, Tifa and Aerith, Tifa and Yuffie, Tifa and Cloud, just everything. Now, the only one I have a problem with, as usual, is Aerith, just because I feel like you know, she can be kind of petty when it comes to her and Cloud. Uh, a moment I didn't really like was when she told Cloud uh, when he receives a present from one girl not to give it to another girl. And I just felt that was kind of mean of her because she's the one that, you know, gives you the option to give it to your girlfriend, which him giving it to Tifa was not optional in Remake. So that's just my personal issue with Aerith as a character because I, I want to be sad for her when she dies because she had a hard life. I mean, Aerith is sympathetic as a character it's just certain traits that for me personally is hard it, it makes it hard to be empathetic sometimes also i notice how the events in zach's world are occurring or have occurred throughout the course of a day if i'm not mistaken cloud and co no Aerith for about a week to 10 days so if that's the case we've been journeying journeying around the planet say for about four or five days right so why is it the time is passing by in zach's world slower 
than the time in the game. Looking forward to seeing what that's all about. One thing that kind of took me by surprise that didn't really, I guess, bother me as much in Remake was the overt difference between, you know, the PS1 pixelated graphics, pre-rendered backgrounds versus the ultra-realistic ones that we now have in the Remake trilogy. And for some reason, I really noticed it more in Rebirth. Like it was really, it really came to my attention in my mind as I was playing because Midgar is a city surrounded with overt green lighting and for me it didn't really bother me that it wasn't so steampunk anymore in terms of like 90s aesthetics and I know some people miss that but now for me like in Rebirth I'm noticing oh Calm isn't actually like the small Germanic town anymore it's more uh, it gives off more of a touristy feel which I, I it fits that 2024 vibe but I found myself kind of missing that more I guess minimalistic understated vibe and I just just think it's it's probably just a product of the tech technology being different and going for kind of a different aesthetic um and I guess I'm just kind I'm just trying to reconcile that within my brain I don't know if anyone else feels the same way it's not necessarily good or bad I guess it's just maybe like cognitive dissonance but not everything that they've done differently or did a different spin on is making me uncomfortable or confused or like I'm still processing it for example the June on segment with the parade I thought was really well done, uh, really cute, and it was a fun rhythm game. Um, I'm a sucker for that, like with the Honey Bee in, and then I guess, you know, with June on, that was like the rhythm game moment that they chose to have, and it was, it was cool. And I like how they expanded it, and I like how Yuffie attempted to assassinate Rufus, which was not in the original. As y'all know, I've been pretty fascinated with Genova as a villain, and I really enjoyed the Shinra ship battle with her as Genova emergent. In the original game, she, it is called Genova Birth, and so I feel like, you know, birth, emerging, same thing, and I love how they gave the fight like a primal music twist. They rearranged her theme again, because, you know, they're so, Square Enix is, is so good at rearranging these themes, and it, and, it, and it kind of harkened back to, oh, you know, Genova is too 2000 years old like she is very much from the past she is ancient so i loved that little touch queen's blood is very addicting you all have seen how many hours i've spent on it as a kid i was not that great at, at final fantasy 8's a card game or final fantasy 9's for that matter at least i i can't remember being so great but with queen's blood i felt like i picked it up pretty quickly and right now i'm very much enjoying it i play it whenever i can and i am working on becoming the queen's blood champion i'm looking forward to seeing how the story evolves further the mystery surrounding zack I hope we also get a couple more synergy attacks for Cloud and Tifa. That'd be awesome. Thank you for watching my channel and for who for whoever's watching my stream, thank you so much. Look forward to me continuing on this journey. Chocobo butt. All I see is chocobo butt. You don't understand. I'm going crazy with all this chocobo butt.